Hi everyone, this is Achuta Bhava from Nightlight Astrology. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Today we're going to take a look at the astrology of March. Um, we're a little early. Usually I release it closer to the end of the month, but um, since the end of the month is taking place over the weekend and I also have horoscopes to get out, um, I thought I would do it today. So there's a lot to look forward to in the month of March. I'm going to put the real-time clock up so we can take a look. As always, I look at all of the transits happening and then narrow it down to the ones that I feel are most significant. And um, so what I've got for us today is kind of a, a condensed version of the month of March. But I, uh, I think really the, the story of this month is going to be a, a new moon that's happening in Pisces that we're going to talk about. Um, there's a few other big things as well. But let's start off towards the beginning of the month. So when we start off the month of March, just a couple of days into the month, you're going to see um, Mars moving into the sign of Gemini. So you can see that right here. I'm going to highlight it for you. And this is one of the bigger ingresses um, of the of the year because uh, Mars moves signs very slowly. So, you know, you're not going to have a huge amount of Mars signs in a year, unlike, say, you know, Mercury or Venus or the moon and sun. Um, Mars is, is going to spend a long time in the sign of Gemini. So enters Gemini on March 3rd. And then watch how long it spends in, in the sign of Gemini. We'll just advance this a little while. So you're talking about it's not moving out of Gemini all the way until about April 23rd. So almost two full months that we'll see Mars now in this sign of Gemini. All right. So that's the first big transit of the month. Now, one of the reasons that this is really significant is because you're now getting um, at this at this moment, you're getting some reception between Mars and Mercury. Mars is moving into Mercury's sign at the exact same moment, like, like literally on the same day, basically the third into the fourth. As Mars moves into Mercury's air sign of Gemini, Mercury will conjoin Jupiter. So this is a very like a very powerful moment for these three planets. In ancient astrology, when planets come into configuration by whole sign, um, they immediately have um, reciprocation with one another, even if they're not degree based. Connect if they're you know if they're not connecting by a degree based aspect. So, you know. Are they connecting by degree? No, but by sign, it still matters. They're now seeing one another by a trine, and you have a very powerful Mercury-Jupiter conjunction uh, connecting with Mars. So let's put that all together, break it down, and um, uh, give it some, some definition here. Mercury and Jupiter coming together. we will just put this up on the screen. Mercury and Jupiter are going to represent um, bold declarations or proclamations. And this is coming also off from the fact that Mer uh, Mercury is now a morning star. So it's in that announcing phase of its cycle. It has a real yang kick to it. And it's with Jupiter, who is also a morning star. So you have this idea of um, almost like uh, the announcement of a new business or the rollout of a new product. Um, Mercury is often related to business and money and contracts and things like that. So this is good news, you could say. Good news. We'll put that on. You could also say that this is the, um, the combination represents knowledge, wisdom, and brilliance, meaning a high level of intelligence, but also possible uh, intellectual arrogance. So something that's like too puffed up or proud or big or something like that. Um, you also, at the same time, this would be a great time for people to go, I, I want to go back to school. I want to study something. I've found my teacher. I've found my guru. I've found a mentor. Or possibly taking on that role yourself. I'm going to be teaching in a classroom or I'm taking on uh, some students as, as mentors. or I'm going to be a mentor for some students. So anything involving education, learning, knowledge, wisdom, brilliance, also potentially the hubris of the intellect with Mercury, Mars, or Mercury, Jupiter. Also the idea of, um, yeah, again, anything that's commerce or business related that has the, the, the seal of approval. Like I remember when, you know, when we were opening our yoga studio, we had to get all, there were all of these zoning, um, 
you know, uh, what am I trying to say? Zone, zoning regulations, I guess, zoning rules, zoning laws, codes that we had to make sure that we were um, in alignment with so that our yoga studio could open. This would be the day that you get the letter that says, uh, good, you're approved, you're open for business or something like that. Um, so the idea also of articulating a new order or um, commencing, like even if you're a teacher, like I was, I was a teacher in grad school for three years. And so I, I taught college composition and uh, cr creative writing and stuff like that. And, um, you know, this is the, this is the time where you start maybe revising or completely revamping your curriculum. If you're a teacher, you come up with a whole new order or way of doing things organizationally. So it's a really nice energy between Mercury and Jupiter. And then at the same time, it's getting this boost from Mars and that's going to add, um, you know, that's going to add the the moxie the confidence the uh will the action the assertiveness to make something happen so suddenly you're in the air you're getting this kind of um a, a kind of cooperative dynamic between mars and jupiter and mercury um, that should allow for things to start moving very smoothly or cleanly and also the idea of finding allies or just finding finding um help from people like you can't do this alone in an air sign you're going to need the help or cooperation of others they tend to be very social signs so i like this for a step forward or for the uh, launching or announcing of something new and important um like that uh okay so that's that's what i've got for this first dynamic of the year on the third and the fourth it's a big one and i uh would love if you're watching this for people to come back and leave comments as to um, what your experience ends up, um, you know, what is your experience like during this time? Because I learn a lot from hearing people tell me about that, but don't email me. because <laughs> I, I say that and then sometimes I get a hundred emails, um, uh, but leave your comment in the chat section so I can read it. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Now, if we go forward from here, I'm jumping a little bit because there's not a lot of action until the 13th. And to me, this is maybe the biggest moment of the month. And I'll try to show you why here. I'm just going to back this up a little bit. And uh, now I've got to plug in my other outer planets. I don't know why they're not in. Um, so hold on. Let me, where's Neptune and Pluto? Okay. So here is what I, I'm calling the transit of the month. Uh, it's a new moon in Pisces. Wow, is it a new moon in Pisces? You have the new moon conjoined with Neptune, who is also conjoining with Venus. Venus is in her chariot, uh, protected from the beams of the sun and exalted and, um, you know, conjoining with Neptune. So this is about as romantic and intoxicating and, you know, like, I, I just want to say on the positive side of things first, because there's, there's lots of potential red flags, but let's just start off with saying, this is that moment of dream come true. Um, the wish is granted, the, the sense of hope and faith is restored, uh, the sense of revitalization or moving forward after a period of doubt or confusion. So it has that kind of miraculous sense of, oh, thank God. Um, it can be a very relieving, very healing um, and, and restorative kind of energy. It also can just be very romantic and imaginative um, emotionally, what do I want to say? Um, emotionally uplifting. So I love this new moon. I think that this new moon is one of the most magical astrological configurations of the year. I'm that high on it. Um, there are some warnings, I think definitely, like as always, when you have an exalted Venus with Neptune in Pisces, because we've seen this a bunch now since Neptune's been in Pisces, you always have to watch for almost like... Um, things get a little Shakespearean and it's like, is it that serious? You know, is it that tragic? So the romantic sort of in imaginative sensibilities of, of Pisces have to be kept in check by the rational and, and the grounded qualities of the, the mind. Um, and, you know, that's not always easy. 
especially given that Mercury is also about to join the party. <laughs> we'll see that very shortly after this new moon. You're going to see Mercury. Let me just push it forward so you can see. Mercury enters on what the 15th or 6th, 16th, right in about there. On uh, yeah, It's going to be late 15th into the 16th probably. And then Mercury is in its fall in detriment. And so there is the potential for this new moon to point toward... Um, Okay, I'm, I was going to tell a story that I think, and I'm just going to stop sharing the screen for a second so I can see you guys. So I'll tell you a story. Um, this has happened to me a few times, and maybe you guys can relate. I've traveled abroad before in my life, and you know I've been to Peru and um, uh, and India in particular for pre some pretty deep spiritual retreats and experiences, pilgrimage and so forth, drinking ayahuasca in South America. And you, you get down there and you have such a mind-bending, otherworldly experience and you go, maybe I'll just live here. <laughs> maybe I'll just move here. Maybe I'll just live in an ashram and walk around India barefoot. <laughs> you, know, you know, so... Um, and, and the same thing, you know, I've seen other people because I've been multiple times to both countries um, and, you know, you, you see, you're with other people and it's their first time and you're like, dude, I'm going to go back and I'm just going to, I'm going to find a place out in the woods. I'm going to get a small trailer and, and, you know, I'm just going to commune with the fairies, or the fairies or whatever. <laughs> and uh, you're like, you, you can't, you can't blame people for feeling that way because once in a while you have such a healing um, and mystical experience or there's such communion with something bigger than yourself it reminds you that I'm really not from this place. Like I am and I'm, and I'm here and I don't hate it. I'm not trying to condemn anyone or anything, but like, I'm just, I'm born to swim in the Milky way. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that this, the, the problem with this new moon is the potential to get lost and swept away by that kind of longing that I've been talking about with the sign of Pisces over the past few, um, I guess the past few videos I've made. So that would be the beware always intoxication, illusion, fantasy, a lack of discernment, lack of rationality. This transit could pull on your heartstrings and get you involved with, you know, some kind of Don Juan singing with a guitar outside of your window who does not have a job. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I'm thinking of uh, Say Anything. Do you guys remember that? Uh, was it John Cusack with the boombox? So, uh, <laughs> I literally had a client one time who met someone who was like this, you know, absolutely fantastic dancer. And it was, they, they had this big Neptune Venus transit going on and she was like, I'm just so in love. And I was like, okay, I'm here to help you. you know? <laughs> Does he have a job? And she was like, well, no. <laughs> I was like, it's just one of the most memorable Neptune Venus conversations I can think of with a client. Uh, you know, and, and I was oh, so in love, so magical, so much, so much dancing. And if I remember correctly, it was salsa. This guy was a really good salsa dancer, you know, but no job, <laughs> no ambition, uh, showed up late to everything, you know, and, um, and, you know, eventually, because this is a, a return client of mine that I worked with a few times, they broke up because the relationship was not substantial, but it was one of the most it had a way like just for to give credit to these connections too because they're not always like that sometimes they can be very substantive but to this woman's credit um it had it it she had been single for a long time so she met him when she was i think it was in her 60s and it, it it stirred something awake in her so in that sense i think it probably i don't think she would regret it but you have to be careful because the things that come up during this time, it's kind of also like this is a transit where I would this this new moon um, is first of all, it's not just one day, right? This is going to plant a seed that lasts for the entire month ahead into April. So in the weeks ahead, starting with this new moon, um, you know, I'm just saying you're you're going to get swept along by something and it's OK to get swept along by something. We don't need to be skeptics all the time we don't need to be rationally grounded all the time um but at this at the same time this is the kind of transit that you know a person may start drinking under or they may you know they, they may get lost in an escapist fantasy of some kind um, for people who are grounded i believe though that this is 
inspiring. It gives this this combination of Neptune and Venus and the new moon plants a seed of um, you know future growth and development, excitement, um, a whole new chapter that's beginning with a feeling of of upliftment or arrival or communion with something bigger. So I really like it for that reason. Um, okay, so then, like I said, Mercury is going to enter into Pisces a few days later. And that's going to be um, right about March 15th into the 16th. And at that point, Mercury is debilitated for a while. Um, and that's not, again, that we could go through Mercury and Pisces, same kinds of bewares with Mercury and Pisces, adding to the theme themes that we've already mentioned. So when we go forward to the 20th, the next big moment is the Aries ingress. And you're going to see the Aries. Here's Mercury and Pisces, by the way. And here's the Aries ingress right there with the sun moving into Aries on March 20th. <clears throat> now, this is a, regardless of where you live, um, because this is not literal, this is a symbolic language. Remember, this moment has, like all cardinal moments in the Zodiac, jump starts something. And when the in the in the light and dark exchange of the solar year that the zodiac is based on, this moment is symbolically representative of the light taking over. And that usually means that there's a big momentum shift in your life, psychically, energetically. Um, I'm gonna be looking at that in monthly horoscopes so we can break that down a little bit more personally. But this Aries ingress um, is also, it, it's coming at a time when um, Venus is just about to conjoin the sun and be sort of reborn. And that's interesting to me. You can see this happening by March 22nd, just two days later. And it takes place between the 22nd, the 23rd, uh, the 24th, and 20. So it's finally basically finished by like the 27th. So between the 22nd and the 27th, you got about a five-day stretch there where Venus is essentially at the heart of the sun. And there's this, and this is important because this is toning the zodiacal year ahead. The beginning of the zodiacal year starts with the rebirth of Venus. The rebirth of Venus means almost like a new way of defining ourselves socially, uh, romantically, sometimes aesthetically, or there's going to be almost like, um, what can you call it? The rebirth or renewal of our relationships or of our friendships or of different social bonds. And there's it's not entirely easy to do this because we're also looking at Venus in Aries being in Mars's sign where it is her detriment, um, her exile. So we're we're talking about almost like, you know defining or or pivotal decisions where we we have to assert something or make a stand or um define or um, again the the phrase that keeps coming up to me is to make a to to make a some kind of statement and because the assertiveness of venus in aries is usually like here's where i stand here's what i desire here's what i like or value or don't like here's what i find repulsive or repugnant you know, and and the Aries Sun, with at with Venus at the center, is saying this is a bigger, this is a bigger moment of redefining my values or what I want or what I desire or what I like or am willing to harmonize with and what I'm not. Sorry, I'm having a hard time articulating that one, but that's what that's about, and that's taking place between say the 22nd and the 27th. Now, interestingly, just as this comes up, as if you need any more, you know evidence that with Venus, Kazemi, and so forth. But here's another piece of evidence that this is exactly what's going to be happening. You can see that on the 28th, we're then going to get a full moon in Libra, Venus's sign, while Venus is at the heart of the sun. You can see it right there on the same degree. It's Some people will measure Kazemi a little bit differently. I use within the same degree, basically. So, um, what would this mean? Well, this, again, if you have the Aries Libra access, you're almost always talking about the need to assert something individually versus the need to cooperate with others, just as a basic psychological um, duality. And here we have Venus 
being reborn at the heart of the sun and uh, moving. Remember, this is going to be Venus now moving into the evening star um, position. So coming, it's a, it's a social change that's happening. The evening star is going to be related to Venus in the world in relationships. Venus in the morning star position is typically more about Venus standing alone or apart, which is a, it's almost, uh, it sounds a little contradictory because Venus is by nature relational, but there's ways that Venus is relational according to how Venus defines or separates itself from others by what I like and don't like. You get a lot more of that during the morning star phase. During the evening star phase, Venus is commingling and uh, learning to commune and cooperate and um, is, is reintegrating itself socially, you might say. But that's happening as the full moon is also coming through in Libra. And again, with Venus at the heart of the sun, but in a Mars ruled sign, we're defining ourselves probably by taking some stands. Um, so that could be a big deal or it could be, you know, relatively minor. It, it's going to depend on each birth chart. I don't think that this has to be like a burn bridges kind of transit, but it could be. It could be the kind of thing where you really have to leave someone or something behind that really no longer reflects or accurately represents your values. So that becomes maybe a little bit of a tension. I think that um, that's probably another one of the biggest transits of the month. And it, 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 it evolves. You know, what's so amazing about this is if you think about that new moon in Pisces, where it's so inspiring. Yeah, okay. But then immediately you're dealing with Venus in Aries, which is saying, okay, whatever's inspiring us on that new moon on the 13th, by the full moon, we're having to make some important choices and maybe um, clarify who or what we like and don't like. And probably that's because we've been so inspired or we've received some inspiration or vision about the future that we're trying to follow from that big new moon stellium in Pisces with Neptune. So don't be surprised if the dream costs you something or if there are important or social ramifications uh, that come off from the inspiration of the new moon. Now, later in the cycle or uh, the month, uh, right around the same time, oh no, we're on March 28th already. So here's another thing that's happening on March 28th. Mars and the North Node are conjoining. Now, what does the North Node do? It amplifies things. In ancient astrology, the North Node is like a bit like Jupiter in the sense that it makes things bigger. And so Mars with the North Node is going to amplify the good or the bad of something. And in this case, Mars with the North Node um, as the dispositor, look, of this Venus Sun Kazemi is going to amplify Mars-like energies. And at the same time, what's inter interesting about this is that while Mars is being greatly amplified, here's in, in Mercury's sign, Mercury's coming into a conjunction with Neptune. I know this is a little hard to follow, so just stick with me. On the 29th, Mercury will then conjoin with Neptune. <clears throat> So, uh, whoops, here's the 29th. So they're conjoining on the 29th. And the way to understand this, as far as I can tell, is to look at the fact that if, what, like, get, get, go back to the baseline, right? If Venus is trying to redefine itself socially, according to some inspiration that has been received earlier in the cycle or coming off from the inspiration that was received at the new moon. But now it has to make like bold kind of um, statements or it has to cut off things that don't work. It has to make crossroad choices about values and relationships. Um, we have then a reiteration of the mind, Mercury, being focused on this dream and this ideal Neptune with Mars being amplified in Mercury's sign. Okay, so what is the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is that someone has been, someone has drunk the Kool-Aid of a total delusion, right? And they're going to start making bad choices and probably cutting off relationships or um, possibly making decisions or making proclamations or statements that get them into trouble socially or that um, have really big ramifications. Um, and they won't be thinking clearly about it, but they'll they'll feel hell bent on doing it and, and driving towards something that um, you know 
may represent like uh, they're miscalculating the social ramifications for a relationship, for their job, for their family, whatever the case might be. Now, the, the most beneficial thing that I can think of um, is that this would represent a moment, again, where um, I'm following a dream, I'm listening to my intuition, and I'm having to follow it and make difficult choices that people may not understand. People may not understand it and may appear irrational to other people, but I'm listening to something that's coming through, uh, internal guidance, uh, a, a, a spiritual you know, a spiritual GPS, not a material or rational one. And, but that it's going to be driving me to act and think and, and so forth. And there could also be some really amazing sort of mental and emotional breakthroughs right around this time toward the very end of March. So um, uh, that's, it's a, it's a really interesting month. I feel like this month is a little Shakespearean. It's very theatrical, imaginative, dramatic. Um, and, I'm really looking forward to breaking down these transits one by one and looking at them with all of you guys. In the meantime, um, remember that I will take a look at uh, horoscopes and look at some of the, not going to look at all of them, but I'll look at some of these transits, especially the new moon. Um, I will be looking at those sign by sign around your chart so you can see, okay, where is this big new moon energy coming from on the 13th? So stay tuned for my horoscopes. Um, I think they'll probably be out on Friday. I might do a live cast for them on Friday as well. Typically, it'll be probably around like 1030 or 11 in the morning, something like that. Uh, that's central time. So that's what I've got. Please leave your comments in the comment section and tell me how your month of March is going. If you're listening to this later in the month, please um, tell me how things are going. If you're listening to it right now before March has even hit, I'd love to hear how you're already seeing this play out um, in your life or how you're starting to anticipate it. That would be interesting to read as well. All right, you guys have a great day and we'll look forward to more soon. Bye everyone.